Hi hobby friends. So you got yourself some shiny new plastic scorpions, did you? Well, me too, but not in time to make an arachnid themed video. I do, however, have an excellent friend who retrieved these metallic relics from a dusty parental loft somewhere. And amazingly, he let me have five of them and gave me permission to, yes. So with all that stripping and scrubbing and rebasing completed, let's take a look at five fairly speedy ways to paint Eldari striking scorpions, and maybe you'll pick up some inspiration for your new aspect warriors along the way. First up, let's pay homage to the paint jobs of our childhood with some classic eye-boiling green. We will put a little modern twist on it though by introducing a more contemporary technique and tool. Over a white base, I'm trying out for the first time Scale 75's new drop paint range. My two word review of these paints is, there, okay. More on that later. So this suitably poppy green goes over everything. And yes, that is an airbrush, but that's just because an airbrush goes faster. This is a plain old flat base coat here, so hairbrush will work just as well for this scheme. Speaking of which, time to get one out and apply some contrast paint. This was the slightly modern twist I was talking about. In the halcyon days of the 90s and noughties, this would almost certainly have been a so-called wash paint. But if you thought contrast Contrast paints were prone to coffee staining, oh boy, you clearly never painted it in the old school base wash and highlight style. I've opted for a slightly cooler green here, so the contrast paint I'm using is the appropriately named Eldari Emerald. When that's applied all over with the brush, we get basically all the benefits of an old school wash, darker recesses and a general staining of the mini, but with none of the nonsense that those old paints gave us. Lots of laborious blocking in next, black on the weapons, brown on the satchels and holsters, and a bright gold and dark silver for the gem settings and chainsaw teeth respectively, and then some yellow chevrons. There's no reason to fight with our terminally translucent yellow pigments here. Base coating the bits in bold titanium white first will guarantee us a fuss-free yellow experience and keep that full-on saturation these nostalgic paint jobs need. And with everything based, it's time to get back to the bit I enjoy, some highlighting and general bolstering of all those volumes and edges. Put on some good tunes and relax into the process of finding your light. We still have four more minis to get through though, so I won't dwell on this stage too much, but sub to the channel for more tutorials in the future, looking at the finer points of figure painting. For now, on to... Yeah, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait for or skip to the end of the video if you're looking for final result shots. So, old school is all well and good, but all that fiddly base coating and edge highlighting does take up quite a bit of time. What if we wanted to get these guys on the tabletop like five minutes ago and still with a scheme that'll have your opponent ogling your little soldiers from across the battlefield? Enter Slap Metal, my take on the now infamous Slap Chop method. This really is a blink or you'll miss it process, so keep your eyes peeled. Over a black base, we dry brush some gunmetal silver, covering more or less everything but the deepest recesses. Over that, we do the same with a nice warm copper metallic, but limiting our application a bit, catching only the upward facing surfaces. When that's done, I grab an off-white gold metallic and add a final little dry brush to the very top surfaces or anywhere I think would really be catching the light. When that's all dry, out comes the contrast paint again, a warm dark green this time, and off we go, applying that everywhere. If you want to get extra fancy, you can get some contrast medium on the palette too, and use that to thin your paints as you work your way up the mini, so more and more of those gold and copper tones shine through. Using metallics instead of regular paints for our underpainting step here, not only gives us a very funky, shimmery effect that suits basically any 41st millennium armor really well, but it also makes our transitions look really smooth. There's something about the pigments in metallic paints that just makes them visually blend better. By switching up from a plain silver to progressively lighter orange and yellow metallics, we set up a great base for that green to shift tone through our shadows and highlights too. 
whiz through the details and in about 30 to 40 minutes you'll have a stealthy Vanguard chopper ready to go. No resting for us though, it's time for... If you've been hanging around this channel for more than five minutes, you'll know I like nothing more than painting minis the wrong colour, and these scorpions are no exception. So just how not green can we go? Purple. Purple is as not green as we can go. With a good bit of purple down on almost all surfaces, I cleaned out my cup and changed over to a yellow ochre tone and gave the mini a more or less regular zenithal coat. Our last highlight pre-shading is done with pure white on just the shiniest, light catchingy bits, and then it's time to green our dude. Just a nice, clean, all over coat of a warmer, olivey sort of colour. Those underpainting colours mix down with the green to give us rich shadows, lush midtones, and nice bright highlights, just like the last guy, but a little more refined. And we get all of that for about 10 minutes work so far. Sticking with the purple theme, I based out the weapons and went with a particularly cool red for the lenses and gems mixed down from magenta and yellow ochre, and at that point I was really having fun and turned the whole thing into an exercise in limited gamuts, sticking to the original three tones of yellow ochre, purple, and a bit of green for the edge highlights. If this sort of chromatic underpainting approach, or the ins and outs of limited palettes and colour theory sound interesting to you, well, you're in the right place because we have playlists and videos all about that. But don't dive down that rabbit hole just yet because next up we're looking at… No, that title is not the name of a minor imperial bureaucrat, it's the combo of ideas that descended on me when I picked up our fourth chap here. John Blanche, as you probably know, is the aesthetic father of the Warhammer worlds and a prolific user of Zorn and Zorn-like palettes in his artwork. Zorn was a Swedish painter famous for, amongst other things, doing a lot of his work using only four paints. And oils are my painting frenemy, a medium I love in some applications and still find a big challenge in others. So let's challenge friends. The base work is still done in acrylics though, with this burgundy red being highlighted up with a nice bony off-white, again from that new scale drop paint range. This is just prepping our canvas though, since as mentioned the real work is being done with oils, starting with an all over dark wash that we almost immediately… oh wait, oh no, oh dear. So this is a minor issue I unfortunately discovered with these drop paints. They are the first acrylic paint I've ever used that comes off rather horrendously with even a very gentle rubbing. This isn't a deal breaker, but combine that with the insane settling, I mean you have to shake these things forever to get them properly mixed, and these are at risk of slipping off my shelf and into a box somewhere to be honest. No final verdict yet though, they could still be really great in certain circumstances, but certainly not as base colours for oil painting. Anyway, as you can see I redid the acrylic prep work in my considerably more robust Molotow paints, and it got back on the oil train. That initial oil wash is really just to get us a nice greasy surface to work on top of, helping subsequent layers blend and smoosh about more easily. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because, as I said, oils are a medium I'm still not particularly comfortable with when it comes to whole mini painting, but I would certainly encourage people to give them a go. They have some lovely properties that are missing from acrylics. As for the palette, limiting yourself like this when experimenting with new things might seem like a double challenge, but by narrowing your colour options you can actually focus better on learning new techniques and methods, so that's what I'd do if I were you. The Zorn palette of red, yellow ochre, black and white is a tried and tested limited palette with lots of subtleties to explore. While you can get a greenish sort of something out of the yellow ochre and black, I thought a washed out blanchy sort of bone thing might be a little more achievable and fun to try. But we still have one more metal elf to repaint, so… 
Let's get really gnarly. Over a black base went a dark green zenithal, and you may have heard me say this a million times, but this really is one you could just as easily do with a regular brush, even dry brushing if you were in a rush. All we're doing here is getting our guy headed in a green direction. Then, with some bright green, slightly diluted paint on the palette, and a little bit of sponge gripped between my reverse action tweezers, I began work stippling this guy to all heck and back. The tweezers are not necessary, you could do this just as easily with a sponge held in your fingers, or with a bit of sponge glued to a stick, or with a regular brush stippling if you have a million years to paint one mini, but I've found these tweezers the most user-friendly option for me. As for the paint, we're looking for something bordering on a heavy glaze for our consistency here. The magic of this technique is in the layering we can build up, and the best way to do that is, well, to layer up using semi-transparent coats that build up on successive applications. We also want a nice bit of variation, so as those highlights build up, I add in some yellow to get them to really pop. All that was cleaned up and enhanced with some regular brush stippling, and when that was done, you guessed it, I went in and worked on the few details, blocking in the weapons with black and haphazardly dry brushing them with silver, putting a dark brown on the leather with some scratchy edges for even more texture, and doing the gems and casings and all the rest too. There is one more step with this guy that makes all the difference though, and that is the final glaze, done here with oil paints. You could do this with inks, contrast paints, or even regular acrylics diluted down appropriately, but oil paints are so quick and forgiving for an application like this. If you were army painting these guys, this would definitely be a good option. It's basically impossible to get coffee staining with oils, and the pliability means you can add in and take away lights and shadows as you see fit. And that was it, all five done. So let's take a look at these guys in their final form. Our 90s hero up first looking suitably bold. This guy is probably the furthest departure from my usual style, and while I'm not likely to become a full-on nostalgia addict anytime soon, there is something delightfully comforting about a paint job like this. Plus, for readability at three foot, it's hard to go wrong with vibrant colours and punchy definition. Time-wise, this chap was probably second slowest, what with all that highlighting and base coating. Probably about an hour and a half for this one mini, all told. Next up, the Speed Demon Slap Metal Man. It's not the sort of paint job that wins awards, but if you're looking for something really striking, with minimal effort, skill and equipment required, look no further. With batch painting, I think you could get these guys down to maybe even under 30 minutes per model, so you're looking at a whole kill team box, the half with the good guys in it anyway, done in a day, easily. Not bad. Slowing down again now though, to the guy that probably took the longest. It didn't have to be that way, mind you, I just really got into the zone with him and lost track of time. I will always love the vibrant shadows and illustration-esque lights achieved with this sort of chromatic underpainting, and with some adjustments this will probably be how I tackle the 10 new scorpions that will be joining my force soon, albeit in less weighty plastic. Oil Man next, and while these are far from the most impressive results achieved with oils, I do see the appeal of this medium a little more every time I use it. In terms of malleability and control, oils are phenomenal, and with a little more practice I might get confident enough to tackle more minis with them. In the meantime, I will be perfectly satisfied with the lovely micro textures and subtle feel even my efforts can yield, and hey, it's always good to remind yourself that the box art colours are a suggestion, not the law. But now, on to our last guy, and if the reaction of the few friends I sent this to is anything to go by, likely your favourite. Oodles of lovely depth from all those sponged layers locked in by our final oil wash, and plenty of grim character from the dings and scratches. And of course, some good old punchy Martian contrast from that heavily pigment powdered base. So, what do you think? Who's your favourite? Don't forget to like and subscribe if you got something out of the video, check the description for links to more fun things, and thank you for watching.